All right. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Thanks for being here. All right. Quite a lot of people already here. Wow. Nice. Thank you. All right. So hopefully this should be fun. Okay. Everything seems to be correct. All right. Okay, great. All right. Thank you, Daniel, for becoming a channel member. And thanks again, sharing for a nice cup of coffee. That's always useful. So <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Hey, everyone. Okay. Impressed with this kind of intro you have. <laughs> you mean the characters? Yeah, I've been working on this lately. Usually I got my characters on, on screen, but for this one, for this stream, I'm planning to try out something different. So we're going to make a sort of Q&A, sort of a quiz where I can post a question, then you can vote in chat, and then we can see and learn a bunch of things together. That's pretty much the goal with this live stream. As usual, it's an experiment, so hopefully it, it won't break, so hopefully Everything here so far is working correctly. All right. Okay, great. So let's see how this goes. All right. So just first of all, just for testing, let me actually make a simple question. So just for testing. Let's go create a quiz. And there you go. <clears throat> all right. So let me just hide the background where's my background the background okay great all right so there you go a very simple and basic quiz and basically you vote in chat by doing vote and then either a or b that's pretty much the goal and let's see if all of this works correctly so as you vote there you go the little characters <laughs> they move there it's pretty silly but all right look at that <laughs> all right that's great so far it seems to be working correctly all right so we got a lot of votes. Seems to be pretty much 50-50, so that's interesting. So I'm going to vote myself as well. So in my case, I'm going to go with dogs. So I'm going to vote B. And there you go. All right, look at that. Cats are winning. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'm just happy that it's working, so yeah. So basically, yeah, instead of just saying A or B, say uh, 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 exclamation point vote and then either A or B. So basically all the people that are still waiting, they are up here and then the character moves into one or the other position once you actually vote. And actually mine did not move. Did I find some bug? No, there you go. There's my character going into the B position. All right, great. <laughs> Look at that, it's pretty much 50-50. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> All right, but yeah, look at that, perfectly 50-50. Oh, dog's winning. <laughs> okay, so the system is indeed working. All right. And then, well, the next part is when there's a question, when the time is just visual, so I can then manually end it. And I can either say one question is correct or all of them are correct. So in this case, all of them are correct. So let's go ahead and end the quiz. And there you go, they're all correct. They're all happy. Everybody succeed. <laughs> all right, great. Okay, so it seems the system is working so far. So that's right. So there you go. Can I vote C? None of them? Not really, no. <laughs> and right away I noticed there's a bug. C and D aren't supposed to be visible. So apparently when I finish, they all become green but that's okay all right that works fine all right okay okay so basically i'm going to try to show some questions and you can vote on the answer then i can talk about some learning thing related to the question and in the meantime sure you can post questions in in chat and i'll do my best to try to keep this thing managed okay it's built with unity and some kind of youtube integration yes this is using the uh the youtube api and if you want to customize your own character just like you can see a bunch of people have custom characters didn't i see a spider-man around here somewhere uh anyway there's my character which has a custom sprite and there you go look at that there's a nice raymond so tim Bolotl jones there you go a nice one anybody else using custom characters nope just one all right so yeah basically you can go into this link, and if you want, you can draw on top of it, and then your character won't have a custom sprite, so it's just a nice, fun thing. 
And if you want to know how I made this, I actually also covered it down here. There's a bunch of links. So there's the transparent unity window, which actually isn't being used here. This is just a regular window. Then the characters, they are using some mesh based animations. And for interacting with the YouTube API, that is using an HTTP request from Unity. That's pretty much it. So, all in all, something pretty simple, but yeah, it looks pretty fun. Look at that ring, man. <laughs> that looks pretty cool. Okay, great. All right, so let me just get ready to start posting the first proper question. Once again, thank you so much, Rogerio, for the cup of coffee. Thank you so much. And thank you, Daniel, new channel member. So this one, oh, look at that, a new channel member. Thank you, Les. Thank you. That's cool. It's awesome when I come back to this overlay and everything suddenly works magically. <laughs> uh, asking what happened to the multiplayer section? Yep, I'm still working on it. I'm currently researching what is the best way to convert the game to multiplayer. So I'm still in the research phase. Then I've got to, I've got to make a prototype. Then I have to record on, uh, write on the lectures. Then I have to record everything. Then I have to edit and then publish. So hopefully by the end of this month, it should have the multiplayer course should be out. Hopefully by the end of this month. Hopefully. All right. Okay. So let me first post a first post the first question. Okay. This is a bit tricky because I got to do it manually, but sure. Let me just put it. Can I put it side by side? Okay. I like that. It's good. Okay. So that's the first option and the second option, the third option, and hopefully everything will work correctly. There you go. Create quiz. And there you go. The brand new question. So what is the name of the game? relating to the game in the free course. So is it Kitchen Chaos, Cloner Cooked, or Chef Chaos? So go ahead and post your vote in the chat and let's see if all of you know. <laughs> all right. And obviously on the side here, I've got the page for the website. So we're going to go through a bunch of lectures and answer a bunch of questions, do a bunch of things. So let's see if all of you know the first basic question. I mean, the clue is kind of on screen, but yeah, let's see. Let's see if all of you know it. Just expand a little bit. All right. All right, look at that. So there's two solitary people on C, and for some reason, some people are on D, even though there's no D right now. <laughs> some people on B, and most people over here on A. There you go, look at that. All those people. There's Raymond there. Oh, look, there's a Spider-Man. I don't know who. All right, that's nice. And another Rayman. Is it supposed to have two Raymans? Or is that a bug? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, let me vote myself as well. So I'm going to vote A. So let's see. And all right. Okay, so there's still some time left. I actually played around with the timer. I mean, hey, yep, there you are. <laughs> all right. From phone to PC, that's why there's two Raymans. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> it's just funny. That's great. Voting E won't crash everything. No, hopefully not. You can try to vote E, just won't do anything, just won't recognize because at most there's only four options. So hopefully the code is correct. How do we change our character sprite? Just follow the guide on the website. All right, so there you go. There's a question and let me go ahead and the quiz. And the correct one for this one is obviously A, Kitchen Chaos. So let's end the quiz. And there you go. Everybody's really happy. <laughs> nice. Okay. So most people got it right. Some people see waiting. Some people put B and C and so on. And over here, we've got the leaderboard. So let's see by the end how many. So pretty much this is the number of correct questions. And on the right side is the percentage. So right now, so far, two correct questions, 100%. So pretty much everybody over here on the, on the leaderboards, all of them got it right. And everything suddenly froze. Oh god, did something bad happen? Actually, something bad apparently did happen. Uh, what exactly happened? Not sure, but okay. Let's keep going and hopefully it won't break completely. Yeah, there's something strange. Move position direct was destroyed. Okay, all right, anyways. Hopefully everything is still working correctly. All right, so that's great. So I've validated that my nice little tool has <laughs> worked. Someone voted E. No, it's not because someone voted E. Apparently one of these characters was destroyed for some reason, but then some code is still getting it. So right over here, can I put it here? There you go. 
Got a missing reference exception, so some object is still finding something. So it kind of broke, but let's hope it doesn't actually cause a crash. Anyways, if it does, I can always just restart it. I've got a nice load for the leaderboard, so that should be fun. And thank you once again, LS, and there you go, a new channel member. Another one, Roki, thank you so much. All right, that's nice. I don't know how many channel members this has. Uh, it's a fun feature. All right, okay, so let me just... So yes, the answer, of course, was Kitchen Chaos. That was the correct answer. So here it is. It's a fun name. I like it. I think it was cool. All right, so let's begin. Let's see. So let's see. Another easy question. Just to make sure that you all understand how to vote. So let's go. Just pasting in all of the options. And create the quiz. There you go. Here is the new question. So how long is the free course? Is it A, 2 hours, B, 5 hours, or C, 10 hours? So let's see if all of you know how much is it. So let us see. All right. There are getting lots of votes. I'm going to vote myself as well. Which is kind of odd though, because if you can see me, then technically you know. <laughs> yeah, maybe I shouldn't vote, otherwise that might be a little bit of cheating when it becomes some more complex questions. <laughs> so let's see. All right. And there you go, most people voting on 10 hours. Let's see if that is indeed correct. All right. Like of a font, front sprite for Rayman looks really weird now. <laughs> yeah, with all of the other ones facing forward. But still, I think Rayman looks great. I mean, when I was coming up with design for these characters, for this mesh animation system, actually it was around the time when Prison Architect came out. So that was more the sort of inspiration, doing something simple like that rather than Rayman. But yep, Rayman. Also works perfectly with this style, since there are no arms and so on, yeah. Does matter if seeks capital or not? Nope. On the code, I made sure to check for that. So if you post, if you write with or without space, it works. If you put an uppercase or lowercase, it works. So hopefully it should work most of the time. You saw pop-up is UI in Unity. Oh yeah, yeah, this is inside Unity. So here is a window I can even drag it and so on. So yeah, this one is inside Unity. It is not a OBS, uh, Element, even though those are sometimes fun. Even vote box looks weird, especially since it looks to the side. Oh, right, if you put just... Right, yeah, go, moving down, yeah, I guess if he moves down, that would be, yeah, then actually <laughs> see him move, yeah. If he moves down, I guess that would be a bit tricky. I got a mail from him, is that so? That's great. All right, so yeah, let's end this one, and obviously the correct question is indeed C, so let's put the answer is indeed C, so let's end the quiz. And there you go, all of them celebrating. So, yep, that is indeed the correct question. All right, so congrats, everyone. That's great. <laughs> How did you do that? You mean the elements? Well, they are using the uh, YouTube API. And if you want to know how to make... You just pretty much just have to do an HTTP request from inside Unity, and you can interact with the YouTube API. And that's pretty much how it works. So you can watch that video, and that's pretty much how it goes. Was there a guy on H hearing? Maybe he was on the way to C, and that is why he stopped in the middle when I stopped, so that's probably why. All right, okay, so let's go. And yeah, let's start with a proper question. So let's go create the quiz. Let me select all of the possible options. And this one, and this one. And let's put it like that. And let's see. Okay, so let's create a brand new question. Okay, so here it is. So this is on the lecture for the Creative Project. And the question is, which Unity version did I use in the course? So was it the 2021 LTS, the 2022 tech version, or was it the 23 alpha version? So go ahead, post your votes. And this one is with regards to the Create Project lecture. So by the way, over here on the website, here is the course curriculum. And if you click on one of these, it automatically scrolls down. So there you go, the question is related to lecture one for creating the project. All right, so people voting, some people saying LTS, some people saying tech. Let's see which is which. All right. Okay, so there you go. Everybody voting, all right. And okay, so let's go ahead and end the quiz and see which one is the correct question, correct answer. And there you go, yep, the correct answer is indeed over here B, and it is the tech version. 
So usually, technically when it comes to Unity versions, you should probably stick with the LTS version, but the only reason why I went with the tech version for this uh, course is because I want the course, I want the video to stay up to date for as long as possible. So technically, usually you should use LTS. I just went with tech because tech is going to translate, going to turn into the LTS version in about two weeks, two months. So yes, technically you should always use LTS. The only reason why I didn't is to make sure that the video stays up to date for as long as possible. But yeah, in your own projects, definitely stick with LTS, which in about two or three months, usually around March or April, that's when Unity launches their brand new LTS version. So at around that time, 22 should turn into LTS. So at that time, you should be able to use that one. All right, so there you go. That's a nice question. And everything's a bit, <laughs> a bit like that. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll restart the overlay. Oh no, it's good now. Okay, I don't know. Sometimes it becomes a bit strange. All right. And once again, thank you so much for becoming a channel member. Another one, Timbo Jones. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for becoming a channel member. Thank you. All right. Okay, so that was the first proper question. So congratulations. And over here on the right side, still see a bunch of people with all four correct 100%. So that's great. Let's see. Let's see how much this one is by the end. Okay. All right. So let's go for the next question. So let's create a brand new quiz for this lecture. Go with yes or no. And there you go. All right. So let's see the next question. So let's create the quiz. And there you go. Here is the question. So this one is with regards to lecture two. So that's the layout lecture. So this one is, do you know about the pivot center and local global buttons? So do you? Yes? No? Maybe? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> so let's see who gets this reference. <laughs> and yeah, there you go. So the question is with regards to the pivot center and local global buttons. These are extremely important. You definitely need to know about them. So let's see how many of you know about them. So this one is kind of a general knowledge question. So let's see. But it is something that I cover in the Unity Layout lecture. So let's see out of this question. All right. So most people are going into yes, that's awesome. Because this is actually two very important buttons that a lot of people don't know about. So yeah, someone asking how many questions are there in total? I'm not sure. I mean, I think that's going to be limited to the time for the live stream. So I'm going to do this for about one hour. So let's see how many questions we can get through in that time. Okay. All right, so there you go. Still got a bit more. And over here on the side, I've got a nice test project so I can use that one to demonstrate whether something is all right so let's see so there you go 20 seconds how many of you yes six people no 11 maybe and to repeat the question all right so let's see do you know about these buttons for some reason that one is constantly doing something that's strange uh all right okay so let's go ahead and the quiz and for this one there's really no wrong answer because it's a general so congratulations to all of you all right so the pivot center and local button so let me put a nice testing window over here so here is a basic testing project just to test it out and basically the buttons that i'm referring to are the ones up here on the scene view so there's this one on this side which says center or pivot and there's another one which is global or local and basically these are extremely important. So for example, if you've got a game object, let's make it a cube instead. So let's make an empty cube. So there you go, here is a cube. And if inside I put another object, so let's say I put another cube inside this cube and for this other cube, let's put it somewhere on the side. So now if I select the parent object and if over there it is select non pivot, look at where the transform handle is. It's right there. It's exactly on the origin of that object. However, if up there, if now I change to center, now instead of being on the pivot, now it's over there on the center. So if you didn't know about this, and for example, you tried rotating, now if you try rotating, you would assume that it would rotate right over there where the handle is. But if you move it to the side, and actually right now, yeah, right, because it's moving on the, if you look over there, it is now rotating just on the Y, but also moving on the X and also moving on the Z. So if I move it even further away, and I select this one, there you go. With that one set to center, now it actually selects the transform handle right on the center. And if I rotate it, look over there, it's not just rotating on the Y. If I rotate on the Y, it rotates like this. But if I rotate on the handle, it rotates like that. 
So this is something that is usually very confusing if you don't know what is going on. So if you were to rotate here, you would be very confused as to why it's not rotating around the tool handle. So that is why this is extremely important and pretty much in 99% of cases, you want to leave this one on pivot. That's That way it makes sense. So if you rotate over there, it rotates on the pivot exactly as it should. So exactly like this. And the next one, that one is the local or global. So that is with regards to rotation. So for example, let's say on the parent, I rotate this one. Let's rotate it pointed upwards like this. So like this, this is set on local mode and look at how the handles are rotated kind of slanted. Whereas if I put this in global, now the handles have the global rotation. So regardless of how the object is rotated, these are always like this. So if I move over here on the red arrow, you would assume that it moves just on the, I think the red is the Z or no, it's the, it's the X. You would think by this, it would only move on the X. Whereas if I put it on local, if I put it like this, this one is moved based on the rotation that the object is in. So if you want to put an object in front of it somewhere like this, and you want to just push the object to the side, then it's usually better to use it on local. Whereas if you want to move it relative to the world itself, put it on global and move it around. So yeah, basically these two are some of the things that can really drive you crazy if you don't know about them. So in most cases, you really want to leave this one on pivot and this one either on local or global, depending on the use case. So that's one of those things that a lot of people don't know about and can definitely drive you crazy if you don't know. So hopefully now a bunch of you have learned something new. So hopefully that's nice. All right, so that was the question and that one there was no wrong answer. So congratulations to all of you. All right, great. Why do you name the channel Code Monkey? <laughs> I always like the, the term Code Monkey, even though technically it's supposed to be kind of a negative but I always found it was pretty fun. So yeah, when I, I actually wanted to name my, my game studio, I wanted to name it that, but there was already a developer called Code Monkey, so I couldn't use it for my game studio, but when it came time to making it for this, for this YouTube channel, for this one, I decided, hey, why don't I go back to that, to that idea that I had previously? So yeah, and yep, there's also a song called Code Monkey, which is also pretty fun. All right, okay, so let's go and Thank you so much, Timbo Jones. Thank you. All right. Okay. So let's go into the next question. So this one is going to be on the lecture on Visual Studio. So let's go ahead, create the quiz. All right. So here is the question. So on the lecture for Visual Studio. So what Visual Studio extension did I use for the extra colors in the code? So was it called color plus? Is it nothing? Is it just the Visual Studio default defaults or is it VS4? So go ahead, post your votes. And let me open up Visual Studio over here, just so we can see in a little bit. All right. There you go, bunch of votes coming in. Okay, all right. My Visual Studio is opening. Let me just make sure that I... Uh, I always forget where are the extensions. The installed ones, yep, that's what I want. Okay, great. Uh, now let me go back and see chat because I can't see it right now. All right, there you go. Okay, so go ahead. <laughs> if I knew this was coming up on the test, I'd have studied more for it. <laughs> yep, I mean, everything is on the test. So yeah, go ahead and hopefully this helps you gain some knowledge. That's the goal with this, with this nice little live stream. So we can all learn together and hopefully it should be fun. All right, okay. There you go, 20 seconds left. Go ahead, post your vote. So it seems a lot of people are confident in C. Is that correct? Some people are still over here stuck on D. I don't know why, because there's no D right now. <laughs> but yeah. All right, so let's see which one is correct. Make my game using Kitchen Cow's assets. Yep, go ahead and use yes in your own projects. I hope you like it. I skipped this one, so I'm going in the majority. <laughs> yeah, usually that is probably a... a a good approach in this little quiz. If you go with the majority, I wonder, maybe there's a question that the majority will go wrong. I don't know, let's see. All right, so let's go ahead and see which one is the correct answer. And the correct answer is C, indeed, it is Vyashvara. Yep, so that it is. My character isn't appearing. Yep, there it is right there. <laughs> All right, so this is a really nice extension. Let me just... So here is my Visual Studio and basically on extensions, Manage extensions, and over here, if you search for online, you'll find Viashfora. And there you go, it adds color to your Visual Studio text editor. 
So this is the one that I use in the course. And basically what it does is it adds a bunch more colors. So look at this. Over here, the default in the case is in a nice pink. So the switch in a nice orange. And the types in a different color. Then the functions in another color. Then the built-in Unity functions in a different color and so on. So it basically adds a whole bunch of colors. Let me see if I've got a more complex project somewhere in here. So I've got a big project. Uh, let me find something a bit more complex. Okay, so let's see this one, the game handler setup. And there you go. So we got a bunch more colors. So like this with all of these colors, you know, there you go. Nice string, nice comment. So with this, I find this is a, it's pretty much the only extension that I have outside of defaults. And I find that it helps quite a lot. Having all of these colors really makes the code much easier to read, much easier to see. Okay, here's the return, else, if, and so on. Here's the type, a function call, and so on. So, yep. I would definitely recommend you grab this extension. So that is called VH4, and yep, 61 of you did indeed correctly guess. So yep, congratulations. All right. Okay, so that was the correct answer. Okay, what about ReSharper? That's an add-on. Yeah, I've heard great things about ReSharper, but I've never actually used it too much. But yeah, I do know that it does a lot of things. Same thing with, uh, what is it called? JetBrains Rider. A lot of people also like that IDE. For me, I stick with I stick with uh, Visual Studio just because it's what I know, but yeah. Basically, nowadays, there's pretty much no wrong option. Anything you choose, all the tools nowadays are pretty excellent. So yeah, sorry, I don't know if there's a similar one for, for Rider. No idea. Is there an alternative for VS4 Mac? Oh yeah, that's right. I'm sorry, I don't think there... I mean, I'm sure there is. So if you search for something... Oh, right, that is made by the same company that made Reshare. Oh, really? I didn't know that. That's nice. Uh, yeah, so for Visual Studio on Mac, you probably need to Google it. I'm sure there's, there has to be something related to... I mean, it's just setting colors, so there has to be. But yeah, sorry, I don't know. It's a... Uh, VH4 is Windows only, so yeah, don't really know for that one. Okay. All right, so that's the question. And over here on the right side... Yep, still got a bunch of people with 100%. I wonder how long is this going to keep up? All right, so let's see the next question. Did I close this question? I did, right? Yeah, now I forget. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's see the next question. So this one is from lecture four. So over here, let me just scroll down to lecture four, which is one of the most important lectures. It's a lecture on code style and naming rules. So let's see what is the question. And there you go. Okay, so here's the question, which is which one of these is correct? So Pascal case, Camel case, and Snake case. All right, so go ahead and make your votes. And which one of these is correct? These are the names for the capitalization of the letters, the words, and so on. So these are the three main types that most people use. So Pascal case, is it capitalized? in front and middle, or is it uh, lowercase over there, uppercase in there? Is camel case lowercase and then uppercase, or upper and upper? Is it lower and then full, full case? Is snake case with an underscore, with dash, with dot? Let's see which one is it. Okay, all right, so go ahead, make your votes, and let us see. All right, so a lot of people are really confident in A, so is that the one that is correct? All right, I just decided on Unity versus other platforms. Well, when I started, which was back in 2012, that was when I started researching uh, game engines because I wanted to move on from Flash and make something that I could play on my on my PC. And yeah, back then, Unity was the only option, so it kind of went by default. But yeah, since then, uh, it works for building any kind of game that I can think of, so yeah, that is why so I started because it was the only option, and I kept with it because it's a great tool. Works great, so that's pretty much the answer. All right, so which one of these is correct? And everybody's really confident on A. There's a bunch of people on us here on D, a bunch of people on C, and a bunch of people on B. Love you. Hey, and love you too. Thanks for being here. All right, so let us see. Let's end the quiz, and let's see which one is indeed correct. And it, there you go, it is indeed option A, so congratulations to all of you. All right, that's awesome. It's awesome that so many people didn't know this one. All right, that was great. Yeah, that is great. So, yeah, if you, 
If you haven't seen the course yet, definitely go ahead, watch the YouTube video, it's linked in the description, and definitely make sure to pay attention to this lecture specifically. Just learning this is one of the things that will massively grow your skills as a programmer, so definitely make sure you always use the correct naming rules. I mean, correct is a bit of a wrong word. The important thing is that you are consistent. So whatever naming rules you follow, doesn't matter. You can follow Pascal case for functions, or maybe use Pascal case for for class names, or maybe use it for fields, or maybe properties, whatever you want. So you can use whatever naming rules on whatever thing you want. The most important thing when it comes to code style naming rules is just being consistent. So whatever you do, whatever you choose, come up with a style that makes sense to you, and then stick with it. That's pretty much it. All right, so congratulations to all of you. Where's my character? There you go, somewhere in here. <laughs> what should I do when I finish your course? Well, you can go and try building an original game if you want. Go ahead, take the knowledge that you gained from the course and try building something nice and original. And hopefully you will have gained quite a nice amount of knowledge that will then enable you to build pretty much any game you can. Okay, so yeah, congratulations once again. And over here, oh look there, got a bunch of people not on 100%. Which is great, because it means that hopefully you'll learn something new. So definitely don't feel bad if you get one of these questions wrong. The whole point is to learn. So yeah, if you get it wrong and you learn something, then that is awesome. You learned it. All right. Great. Okay. Turtle, it's been two years since I started my game dev journey and you've been the most helpful in person. Hey, Aaron Clint VR. Hey, that's awesome. Hey, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. I'm always very happy to hear that people have enjoyed tutorials that they have helped you in any way so yeah that is awesome best of luck in all of your game dev journeys and all of your individual ones hopefully the videos help you so we can all just make games and have fun together so hopefully all right some kept the boxes in there <laughs> yeah there oh hey cpu hey thanks for being here yeah there you go got a bunch more custom characters <laughs> yeah keeping the boxes in there the boxes are meant for guiding you don't necessarily <laughs> but yeah it's kind of funny head right and there you go it is the head pointing right all right okay so let's go on to the next question yeah i think i'm going a bit slow because it's already been 40 minutes okay so let's go let's i keep forgetting that if i end the the question or not i think i did yeah Okay, so the next one is on post-processing. And once again, we are going to have another interesting four options. So let's go, let's create the quiz. All right, so there's a question. This one is with regards to the post-processing lecture. And there you go, someone <laughs> answered already. Okay, so with regards to post-processing, should you add post-processing as soon as possible? So yes, no, maybe, can you repeat the question? So let's see which is which. All right, go ahead and start voting, and let's see what do all of you vote for this one. Let's see. It's going to be fun. All right. Okay. All right, there you go. So on this one, got a, a nice mix. Yes, no. All right. Let us see what do all of you. So this one really hard to the lecture on post-processing, which actually, yeah, actually got the the thing over here so let's see the post-processing lecture and if I go put it on play yeah that's kind of the issue with having an 11 hour is that I can't really click in there to see it I gotta go to the sign there you go adding some nice visual assets then adding a volume component and starting to add a bunch there you go look at that a lot of bloom way too much bloom got a nice low checklist to make sure that everything glows and playing around with anti-aliasing and so on. There you go, all just trying to make the visuals actually look pretty good. All right, so there you go, 10 more seconds, let's see. So it seems the majority thinks that it's no, so is that the correct answer? I don't know, let's see. All right, there you go, two seconds, one second, and let's end the quiz, and which one is the correct answer? And the answer is all of them are correct. <laughs> Basically, when it comes to post-processing, usually you probably shouldn't do it like literally at the first thing. So you should probably focus on the actual mechanics and the actual things. So personally for me, post-processing is something that I leave later on in the process when I actually want to show the game to someone. So when I want to, when I want to promote it and so on. However, one thing that a lot of people have mentioned, which I do think that it makes a lot of sense, which is post-processing can also help you with regards to motivation. So if you're the kind of person who has trouble with motivation, motivating yourself, 
with actually continuing to work on the game. If that's the, the kind of mindset that you have, then post-processing can actually help because by post-processing, you're usually making sure that your visuals look quite a bit better. So if you focus on that in the very beginning, that can actually help you stick with the project for the long run, which in turn obviously helps you actually finish that project. So for me personally, the answer is no, I don't really do it as soon as possible. I take it for quite a bit later on in the dev process, so I focus on the actual mechanics first. But I can definitely see how for some people who have issues with motivation or that sort of thing, then making the game actually look good. I think it was actually Mark Brown when he was working on his prototype that he said that working on the visuals for quite a bit actually helped him stay motivated because the game actually looked good instead of just being a bunch of cubes. So basically the answer for this, post-processing as soon as possible, that depends on you. For me personally, I'll leave it a bit later on, but for a lot of people, but for some other people, maybe working on it in the beginning in order to make something look good, that might help. So yeah, pretty much no wrong answer there. So congratulations to all of them. And Super Chat, thank you. We still was able to create my first game just because of your awesome lessons. It's not on Steam for Wishlist. Oh, that's awesome. So what is the name? <laughs> you have to say the name whenever you talk about your game. So yeah, that's awesome. I hope it does well. Yeah, and I hope it's also quite a bit uh, further away in terms of the actual launch. So I hope you left some time for gathering wishlists. So I think I think uh, YouTube probably doesn't allow links, but if you post the game name, hopefully it should show up. Oh, and by the way, uh, the game Kitchen Chaos is also available for free on Steam. So if you want to play the final game, if you want to have some fun, go ahead. And if you want, go ahead and write a review. So there are 10 reviews. So now it shows up with the score. So do it. Yeah. All right. Okay. So yeah, so that was fun. So, all right. So I hope that was a nice teachable moment about post-processing. Yes or no? All right. Okay. So let's go on to the next one. All right. Name is, yeah, there's a super chat queued. Hey, name is Paratives. Won't be out in three months or something to implement multiplayer. Wow. <laughs> okay. Multiplayer. That's a bit of a, a tricky one. So let's see. Now I'm curious. So, where's the search bar? Why is Steam so, so tiny? Uh, Paratives. Oh god, is it horror? <laughs> yeah, horror is not my thing, sorry. So yeah, I will not be playing this. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, looking at the trailer, it doesn't look good. I mean, horror, that's one of the main things where you definitely need to make it look the part. And it certainly does look the part, so congratulations. Okay, so all of you, if you want to support this developer, go ahead and add it to your wish list. Adding multiplayer, yeah, horror in multiplayer. That's a interesting one. What was that one? That was a mega hit. There was a mega hit multiplayer game recently. I don't remember the name, but yeah, it can definitely do well. But yeah, horror is not my thing. So either way, I definitely wish you the best of luck in your multiplayer journey. All right, okay. Uh, so let's see, multiplayer is a tricky one. <laughs> Free course on multiplayer, yeah, hopefully in a little bit. <laughs> I mean, technically you can definitely uh, use what you learned from making uh, the Kitchen Chaos game. You can definitely, what I'm going to cover in the multiplayer course, you could definitely use it to convert that and learn about how to make a horror game. That would definitely work. So yeah, that's the great news. Once you learn how a tool works, applying it to a multitude of different game genres that always works all right okay so let's move on to the next lecture so this one lecture next question so this one is going to be on the character controller all right so let's see for this one how many people get this question right only let's create the quiz and there you go okay so question this one is on lecture seven so that's a lecture on the character controller should you make all of your variables public so A, no, yes, or yes, because I want to torture my programmer teammates. <laughs> so let's see how many of you get this one. I would hope that it's most of you because it's something that I repeat over and over again. So I hope that if you're a regular on the channel that hopefully this one is pretty much automatic. So let's hope so, let's see. And there you go, lots of people. And yep, someone over there stuck in the, yep, there you go. Yeah, I'm not supposed to be staying there. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> All right, so let's see how many of you. All right. So this one is on the lecture on the 
character controller, which is pretty much the first really medium lecture on the course. Before this, it's all setting up, importing the assets and so on. So this is the one that really gets hits the ground running on making some nice, some nice code. And by the way, if you're following the course, definitely make sure to check this website because I've added the frequently asked questions to a bunch of these lectures. So if you want to know some things, chances are you can go up here and there's possibly a question that you have is already been answered over here. So for example, if the code isn't running, if you don't see the log, so possibly you didn't name the player exactly, you didn't attach the object, maybe update is not written exactly and so on. If you only see a single message, it probably is on the collapse button and so on. So yeah, lots of interesting questions here that a bunch of people have asked and yeah. So I'm constantly updating this. So if you're following the course, definitely make sure you check out this nice companion page. Okay, so that's it. So let's go ahead and the quiz and see which one is the answer for this one. And yep, of course, the answer is indeed A. So no, you should not make all of your variables public. So hopefully for all of you. So there's a bunch of you said yes and yes, because you want to torture a bunch of people. So maybe, but yeah, the answer is indeed no, they should not automatically be public. In fact, they should never be public. So pretty much, I don't think, I generally don't think I've ever seen a use case for public, ver well, the exception would be on scriptable objects. So for those, I usually do make them public because on a scriptable object, which I always deal as a read-only data container. But yeah, for regular variables, yeah, they should never be public. There's no reason to be public. Why never is because, I actually cover that in detail, so it's probably best to watch a dedicated video instead of me repeating the same thing over again. But pretty much when you make it public, you are enabling both read and write access from anywhere. So if I can actually go here, can I create something? Uh, yeah, there you go. I think I can. All right. So let's see if I can, if I can do something like this. Okay, so basically, you shouldn't do it because you are enabling read and write access from anything. So for example, over here I got a public, a float for the move speed. Let's say this is the character script. And then I've got another one. So public class for the enemy. So the enemy is doing something. And over here the enemy has a reference to the character. So the character, so this is the player character. And then on private void update, for some reason, the enemy decides that it wants to mess up the character. So you can go into the character, set the move speed equal zero. And there you go. This one is perfectly valid code. So the enemy can suddenly modify the move speed on the character and everything breaks and your player can no longer move because you accidentally modified something when it should never be modified. So basically by making it public, you are enabling both read and write access from any other class. So if you have a thousand classes in your code base, then that's a thousand points where you might be modifying this, which might cause all kinds of breakage things in your game. So you don't want that. Whereas if you make this private, then you know for certain only the code inside this class can actually modify this field. This one cannot access it because that one is private. So this one no longer can cause that bug and suddenly break everything because the player has no movement. So that's the super quick explanation of it, but definitely go ahead and watch the dedicated video. If you just follow this one rule, then that's one of the simplest things you can do that will massively increase the quality of a code. So definitely make sure you do it. Okay. All right. Talking about an absolutes is quite wrong. Well, I would love for someone to tell me. Generally, I would agree. There's uh, most things in game dev, they aren't really absolute. So there are best practices and so on. However, when it comes to public variables, I generally do not see there is a single possible positive use case. There really isn't. You are enabling both read and write access from anything. It just really makes everything much worse. It just, it just makes the code much harder to read, much harder to understand. So yeah, when it comes to public variables, I have never seen a positive use case. So yeah, for this one, I would definitely use the absolutes. Definitely never, ever use it. That's pretty much it. All right. Not get bruised on your hand by constantly forcing the water bottle to close. I mean, this one's pretty soft, so yeah. <laughs> or I guess maybe my head is a bit too hard. That's maybe it. Yeah. But is there a video lecture that covers this integrated chat voting scene? I did make some, cover some, there's some tutorial links down here at the bottom of this page. 
But basically, uh, it's just really working with the YouTube API. So the YouTube API has a way to get the live chat comments. So that's what it does. I'm doing an HTTP request from inside Unity. So there's a dedicated tutorial here. So I do that in order to ask YouTube to get me the live chat comments. Then I use that to spawn some characters and show some nice chat bubbles. So that's pretty much it. Pretty soon. Hey, thanks for being here live. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, these live streams are, are a bit random. So yeah, thank you all for for being here. All right. Okay. So let's go on to the next question. So this one is going to be on lecture eight. So let's create the quiz and let's see this question with A, B and C. Now that I'm noticing, yeah, I think all the questions only have A, B, C. I don't think I include the anyways. Okay. All right. So let's go. Once again, thanks for the super chat. And there's a cute super chat. All right, hey, Clippy. <laughs> That's nice, I miss Clippy. It was fun. <laughs> thanks for being awesome. Hey, thanks for being here. Uh, that's nice. All right, so for the next question, so let's create the next question. Okay, so this one is gonna be on lecture eight. So that is the lecture on the character visual and rotation. So on this lecture, what is the difference between lerp and slurp? So is the difference that slurp sounds bad, which I guess maybe a little bit. Uh, is it that lerp works with vectors and slurp works with directions or lerp works with directions and slurp works with vectors? Boy, saying all of this is a bit tricky. <laughs> all right, so go ahead and vote. And let's see, oh boy, there seems to be a lot of mixed feelings about this one. Okay, so let's see how many of you get this right. This is one of those things that is actually super useful. And it's also something that I have a dedicated video on. Well, sort of dedicated, it's actually a short video because it's something super simple. But yeah, if you want to learn about Lerp or Slurp, which both work pretty much the same way, definitely go ahead and watch this video. So let's see how many of you get this right. Okay, so it seems the nice majority is going with B. And a bunch of people think that Slurp sounds bad, which I don't think I can disagree with. <laughs> Okay, and let's see, so vectors or directions, so which one works with which? So let us see. All right. Are vectors directions? That depends on each person. I guess for directions, what I mean is kind of like a vector always with a magnitude of one. Whereas with vector, I mean a vector that can have any magnitude. So maybe it's a tiny vector, maybe it's super long. Whereas direction, that one always has the same thing and just rotates points at different positions. So that's kind of what I mean, but yeah, technically not, possibly not the correct technical term, but yeah, I'm not a mathematician, so yeah, I don't know. Tutorial for slurp. Well, I covered lerp over here, and slurp works pretty much exactly the same way, except for one tiny difference, which is this difference. So is it vectors or is it directions? All right, so let's go ahead and end the quiz and see which one is it and just make sure that I don't make the mistake myself. <laughs> All right, so let's end the quiz. And there you go, yep, the answer is over here in the B. So Lerp works with vectors, whereas Slurp works with directions. Now, the important thing with this one is, for example, if you make a interpolation between a vector pointing right and then a vector pointing left, if you do that and you use Slurp, then basically it's going to rotate because it's going to work with directions. Whereas if you use it with Lerp, then basically this vector is going to shrink and then pretty much do a 180 and stick around there. So that might sound a bit confusing, so maybe this... <laughs> but yeah, pretty much on... If I... Can I make some quick testing code? So if I write this testing, just you show you in action. Let me just quickly make this. So testing. Right, void update. Let's go transform dot forward. Okay, so let's do over here. So with a nice testing script. So basically transform dot forward. Let's do a a mathf dot slurp slurp. That's a, not mathf. I want the vector three. Which by the way, there's slurp in both mathf and that. And let's go into new vector three. Four, let's go left. So minus one, zero, zero. And then time dot delta time. Okay, transform dot forward equals this. Okay, so let's do a basic lerp and let's see what this does. So now over here, let me just create an object, put the testing, and just let me 
Okay, actually, I probably should have prepared these testing scenes beforehand, but... Uh... Ah, crap, it already has... Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to... Figure this out, trying to make this... Trying to show the... The thing in action. Uh, right, yeah, I definitely should. Okay, alright, so... Let's see... Okay, yeah, pretty much. So let me just rotate this. Okay, so like this. So let's see the... Okay, so here is the demo that I'm showing. So basically what matters over there, the blue arrow. So currently this one is using Slurp. So let's see what this one does. So if I head on play, look at that blue arrow and let's see what it does. And there you go, it rotates around like that. So look what it does. And actually like this, I'm not sure if it's going to... But let's see. Now let's swap it out for a lerp, and let's see with lerp what this one does. And if I go ahead and I hit on play. And... Okay. Oh, is it not moving? Yeah, I should probably add a log so we can see. Transform dot forward. Oh, right, because, <laughs> yeah, so actually with this, uh, yeah, with this demo, actually, LERP isn't going to work because transform.forward is always going to be a normalized value, so, <laughs> so that's funny. So for the thing that I wanted to test, it doesn't actually work, so let's do a vector3 for the test vector, and over here, let's instead use the test vector and print it out. Okay, so I can't really see it visually because... Yeah, you cannot learn the fourth back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I forgot about that because it normalized automatically. So basically like this, we should be able to see. So there you go. So this is the alert, which that one should probably start off on you. One, zero, zero. Okay, so let's see what this does using lerp. Slurp always looks better in my experience. Yeah, pretty much if you're handling rotations, then lerp will probably always look better. So slurp, sorry. Okay, so this one is using lerp, and basically the starting vector is 1, 0, so a vector pointing to the right, and look how this, the vector basically becomes shorter and shorter until it gets into 0 and then flips around to the other end and then becomes, so basically becomes shorter and then goes out. Whereas if you use slurp, this one actually uses directions instead of using a vector. So if we go into this one, let's see, instead of becoming shorter, let's see what it actually does. So let's look at the vectors. And there you go, so it starts off on one, and instead of becoming shorter, this one actually rotates. So this one goes down on the Z, so it goes down like this, and rotates around, instead of becoming shorter and pointing the other way. So basically that's pretty much the difference, so... Lerp works with vectors, so it works with multiple magnitudes, whereas Slurp works with directions. So if you're handling rotations, you should probably stick with using Slurp, since that one is going to rotate around even when you do 180 degrees, whereas with Lerp, the character would suddenly flip around. So that's pretty much the answer. Okay, so that was a bit <laughs> a bit tricky trying to do a demo live, but hopefully for those of you who didn't know about the differences between Slurp and Lerp, hopefully that was educational. And thanks again, Clippy. Thank you. All right, okay. So let's go on to the next question. So where is it? Let's go into this one. So let's create a quiz. And with this one, and this one, and this one. Okay, all right, so let's create a brand new question. Okay, so this one is on lecture nine, so this is the lecture on animations. So if an animation has a property in yellow saying missing, what exactly is the problem? So is the problem that there is no child object with that exact name? Is it that the animation file is corrupted? Or was the animation not added to the animator state machine? So now let me, as you try to answer, let me quickly Try to showcase the problem in action. And I've got a visitor right now. Okay, so let me just... Alright, so this is what I'm what I'm talking about there. That one is in yellow, so what does that mean? Go ahead and post your 
Question. So there you go. What does that one in yellow mean? Putting well, <laughs> D for doggo. <laughs> yeah. Um beijinho. Vamos para já vamos. It's almost it's almost dinner time, so that's why he's starting to get stressed. All right. What's his her name? His and it's Tico, and sister Teka. She's over there sleeping. So yeah. She usually stays sleeping and he's the one that, that comes out. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's see which one is which. Multiplayer codes, do you know if it's going to be Photon Engine? Nope, it's going to be using netcode for game objects. So that's Unity's uh, uh, built-in official multiplayer solution. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> All right, okay, so let's see and see which one is the answer. So the answer as to why that one is in yellow saying missing. So let's end the quiz and see which one is the correct answer. And drum roll, and there you go, the answer is indeed over here A. So the answer is there's no child object with that exact name. Should I have the same name and path? Yes, correct, yes. Uh, yeah, basically when this happens is because there's no child of this object named exactly head. This is one of the annoying things about animations, is that it's actually based on strings, so it's all based on names. So most of you probably already know that I hate strings for identifying things. And basically the reason why this one is saying missing is because I went ahead and I modified this one. So I renamed this one to head2, so now if I play the animation, that one isn't actually going to play the animation because it doesn't have any object named exactly head. So the solution to this is either go up here and you can click you can click once to select and then wait a bit and then click again and you can rename the object. So if I go over here and I rename this property to head2 to match the one over there, there you go, now it's no longer in yellow, so now it does fine. Now if I move, there you go, it does... Oh boy, this is really... <laughs> it's really... Why is this so... Yeah, I don't know, it's very strange. Uh, yeah, so like this, there you go, the head is indeed moving up. Whereas if I put it back into that one, where it says missing, now I move around, now the head does not move. So this is always based on strings, it's always based on the exact names. That is one annoying thing. So if you ever have this problem, you just have to make sure to rename so that it matches exactly as the child was named when the animation was recorded. So if you do that, then yep, the animation plays correctly. All right. Okay, so that was a fun one. So most of you apparently already knew that, so yeah. Is Netcode completely free? Yep, it is. Netcode itself is free. Then you've got the various UGS tools. Those are paid for, but yep, Netcode itself is indeed free. The idea of work being stolen, copied. I would say if you're talking about game ideas, everybody has a million game ideas. So definitely, definitely do not, definitely don't worry about that, about uh, people stealing your game ideas. Everybody has ideas, ideas are a dime a dozen. What really matters is execution, so definitely don't worry, definitely share your ideas with people, talk about it and so on. If you put head under body, yeah, exactly. Uh, oh boy, I'm moving the wrong window. Uh, where's my other window? I've got way too many windows open, so it's quite tricky. Yeah, if over here, this one is a prefab, but if I try moving, can I try moving inside a prefab? Yeah, it breaks the whole thing. Uh, can I duplicate this one and go into, where's my prefab, unpack completely, yeah, and now if I go in here, and let's rename this one, or let's rename this one, so put it on head, if now I put the head inside the body, and there you go, now that one's also missing, because yep, like CPU mentioned, it has to be the correct path, so this one is missing, this one actually has the correct name, but there's no direct child of this object named head, that one is a child of the other one, so if I were to make this one a child that one, there you go, that does fix. All right, okay. So that was a fun question. All right, now let's see what else. Okay, so that was the Electron animations. So that's actually pretty fun. I actually made the animations on this game myself, so I'm I'm talking about the, the Kitchen Chaos, so they're pretty, pretty happy with how those came out. These are simple animations, but they work pretty well. All right, so let's see another question. This one is a quick and simple one. So let's put it, let's put it just 30 seconds because this is a super simple one. So let's go on to the next question. Can I move my character by chat? No, it goes automatically, it goes randomly. And then as you vote, it goes there. 
specs of the equipment you choose. Let me just post the quiz. Uh, specs. Well, my GPU is like a 3090, I think. My monitors are like 10 years old. My keyboard, I actually just bought it recently because my other one actually died. So, yeah. My CPU, I have no idea. I built it like two years ago, so yeah. My specs aren't anything... I mean, I guess my GPU is the only thing. Uh, 3090 is definitely overkill for a lot of people, but since I have to do a lot of video rendering, for me it's really helpful to be able to render a video and not have to wait hours on end. <clears throat> I mean, even with that, rendering the, the course, which is a 10-hour video, rendering that one took quite a long time. It took like three hours, which is actually pretty fast. Uh, three hours to render a 10-hour video. But then uploading, that's the main thing that took quite a long time. All right. Specs do you think a person needs to be able to start making a game? The answer is anything. Literally, whatever you have right now, as long as it's a computer, because Unity doesn't run on mobile, as long as it's a computer, then yep. All right, so yeah, this was a, a simple question. Can you use an orthographic camera in a 3D game? And the answer is yep, you can. So let me end the quiz, and the answer is A. Yep, you can use an orthographic camera even in a 3D game. So there you go. Congrats to all of you. Tunic used an orthographic camera. Yeah, probably. It's uh, definitely a gorgeous game, Tunic. That was that was awesome. Thank for the course. Yeah, that's great. If your game will run on a potato, here we go. Yeah. Minimap tutorial. Yep, that one also uses a... Yeah, but basically, if some of you don't know what exactly is an orthographic camera, so here is my demo scene. So this one is for the main menu for Kitchen Chaos, and if I select the camera, where's my camera, there you go, my main camera, and over here it is set as perspective, so this is like a, it's what you usually think about when you think of a 3D camera, but you can put it as orthographic, and basically orthographic means that it doesn't, I don't know the technical term, doesn't go out to the sides, so pretty much any object in any position doesn't get distorted, it always gets, it always looks exactly the same. So over here the characters, they all look perfectly the same even though they are at different distances, Whereas with a perspective camera, this one up front is much bigger and the ones on front are more squished. <laughs> I don't know the technical terms, that's pretty much it. But yeah, so yeah, even with 3D meshes, you can still use a orthographic camera or even with two, uh, 2D sprites, which by the way, over the, the characters over here, these are all actual flat 2D sprites. So I can actually show the, the oh, if I can show, here is the scene view that is running the game right now. And if I go over there, there you go, look at that, all of the characters, they are all flat sprites. Look at that, they're all flat, pointing straight at the camera. So yeah, this is a 3D scene, so the characters are moving on the Z-axis. And yep, there you go, they are flat characters with a perspective camera, which I can zoom in and zoom out. And for the zoom in method, this one is modifying the field of view. So like this, lower field of view, and back out, and a wider field of view. So you can see a bit of uh, on the corners there becomes a bit more like that. Okay, right, so that was another fun one. So let me put just this one on the side, like that. So there you go, you can definitely use orthographic cameras in 3D games, that does work, and can definitely be good. All right, can you add subtitles? Yeah, sorry, but getting subtitles for multiple languages for a 10 hour course, that would be quite tricky to do, so yeah. Ideally, I'd love to, but yeah, that would be quite tricky. I don't think God Monkey speaks that many languages. Yeah. I mean, even adding just in Portuguese, the amount of work that it would take to translate 11 hours, <laughs> that would be quite tricky. So, yeah. How you learn Unity and programming? Well, back when I started learning, back in 2012, YouTube tutorials weren't really a thing. So, I learned by trial and error, just try to build something, then it doesn't work, it breaks. So, then go on Google, find some mysterious forums talking about things. So, that's pretty much it. So, Back in my day, <laughs> I learned pretty much based on trial and error, trying to do something, doesn't work, finding an error. I mean, the good news is that Unity uses C Sharp, and C Sharp is widely used, so even back then, so I couldn't find Unity specific things, but I could definitely find C Sharp related things. So, yeah, that's pretty much how I learned. So, nowadays, all of you are very lucky that you have lots of tutorials to teach you guided step by step, yeah. <laughs> Basically, the videos that I make nowadays are the videos that I wish I had when I got started, which was, yeah, 10 years ago. Yeah, over 10 years ago, because I started using Unity, it was in December of 2012. So we are now in 23, so yep, it's been over 10 years since I've been using Unity, so yeah. Definitely quite a lot, alright. 
why didn't you use an async method to load the scene? Just because the scene is, is super quick, so in order to load the loading scene, the loading scene is super small, so yeah, loading that one without async doesn't really matter. So yeah, if you want to do something more complex, then yeah, definitely use the async method, but for simple use cases, the regular non-async method, that works great. Will the multiplayer course be full server authoritative? And nope, I mean, the goal of this game, it's really a, a, a casual co-op game, so for that one I'm probably going to keep things simple and just stick with using uh, client authoritative, because there's no... It's a co-op game, so there's pretty much no issue with cheating. But yeah, that is one topic that I very much would like to cover in a future dedicated tutorial. Alright, okay, so that's fun, so let's go on to the next lecture. Uh, Alright, so let's go with this one, so let's create a quiz. And this one is a big one. So let's see, well, let's see if this one actually fits the UI, I hope so, otherwise it's gonna be tricky. So let's go, create the quiz for the next question. So there you go, this one is on lecture 12. So that is one over here on collision detection. So the question is, what is the difference between overlap box and box cast? So is it A, overlap box tests if there's a collision on the target area, and box cast tests if there's a collision anywhere between two points? Or is it B, overlap box is 2D, box cast is 3D? Or is it C, overlap box is better suited for characters and box cast for objects? So go ahead and post your votes in chat. All right, so let's see. So this one is a slightly tricky one. I've seen uh, a bunch of comments. I've been answering comments for the course and yeah, a bunch of people do have a question similar to this. So let's see. And let me prepare a simple testing scene. Where's my, oh, it's over here on this side. Okay. All right, so let me just, Okay. All right, so go ahead and vote. I'm just preparing a simple testing scene. Okay. All right, so on chats, on vote, and look at that. Seems people are convinced that it's A, so is that correct? And some people think that overlap box is 2D, box cast is 3D. Okay, so let's see, so this is the on the collision detection. And once again, the FAQ, <laughs> actually the FAQ is kind of answering the question here. So <laughs> I guess that's a good thing about the FAQ, but yeah, kind of screws up the, the quiz here. But anyways, go ahead and vote. The whole point is knowledge. It's not really, it's not really about, and look at that, still tons of people getting 100%. So getting all the questions right. So, oh, that's awesome, congrats. All right, so let's go ahead and end this question. And let's see which one is the answer. And indeed, <clears throat> the correct answer, yeah, there you go, the correct answer is indeed A, which is overlap box tests if there's a collision just on the target area, whereas the box cast tests if there's a collision anywhere between the two points. So yep, that is the difference between those two. So let me pick up a simple testing scene. So here I've got a testing scene. So let's say this is a wall and this one actually has a collider. And let's say you've got a character over here and the character wants to move to this position. So if you do, if the character is here and you do an overlap box over here on this position, then it won't return false because it won't find any colliders because there are no colliders directly on this position. Whereas if you use a box cast, basically what the box cast does is it moves a virtual box or a virtual shape, depends if it's a box cast, sphere cast, and so on. If it's a box cast, then basically the physics system will move a virtual box in the virtual physics space and it will move from A to B. And in that movement, it won't find anything that collides within between the points A and B. So in this case, if you do an overlap box, it won't just test this position and return false. But if you were to do a box cast, it would start from here and move a virtual box onto this direction and it would find this wall in the middle. So that would return true because it would indeed find something. So that is the difference between those two. If you got a big distance and you want to make sure, like for example, for a, a bullet, if you want to fire a bullet, you don't want to just test on point A and point B. You want to test if there's a wall or a character or anything in between point A and point B because the bullet is probably going to move a ton of distance between one frame and the other one. So for a bullet, you really want to do a cast instead of just an overlap because you want to test if there's anything in between the two points. So that is the difference between those two and definitely knowing 
those differences are very important and once again it's all over here on the FAQ on the website so if you're following the course definitely make sure you check the website page okay right <clears throat> Recommend paying a modular musician or attempt to find somebody for free. I mean, I guess it depends on what is your goal. If you're trying to make games commercially, then yeah, you should definitely pay for for the assets. But if you're doing it just for fun, just as a hobby, then yeah, definitely find someone who also wants to who also wants to try out their improving their modeling skills and build a game together with no goal of profit. So pretty much depends on your goals. Both can definitely work. My custom character. Yep, let me just check this out. So let me refresh the page, which actually takes a little bit, but okay, so let's see. I can't speak very English very because I'm from Egypt, but I can understand some words. Alright, that's awesome. I mean we always uh it's always a learning process. For me I learned English by watching Cartoon Network as a kid. That's pretty much how I learned, so yeah. So yeah, if you're here, if you can uh, understand a few things, then yep, over time you will definitely learn more and more. So yeah, just keep exposing yourself to English things. And yeah, you will eventually learn. That's how I learned. So yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm just checking the the validation thing, trying to see. Yeah, I really need to update this code because it's quite a bit slow. Uh, I'm just looking at things. Uh, so far, okay. There's a bunch of. Okay, so let me validate these new characters. Okay, so I'm validating a bunch of them. By the way, there are some that uh, some people have included custom characters but they did not link their YouTube account, so some of these won't show up, but the others should. Let me just update the character customization. So that should be updating now, I hope. There you go, there's a nice new custom character. So there you go, if you just joined recently, so you can draw on your own character, make your own character, and let me just... Where's my chat? How was my chat? There you go, like that. You can follow the tutorial in order to customize it and so on so there you go another nice custom character never there CPU with a nice character anyone else there's me with a nice character and there you go Timbo Jones with a nice Rayman and anyone else there was a spider-man a while ago no I guess no more <laughs> all right okay okay how did you manage to pay the bills while making games you mentioned you never worked nine to five well I mean, first of all, it helps that I live in Portugal, where there's a relative low cost of living. So when I started, I could make a living on something like six or seven hundred bucks. So by the time that I was also, well, I mean, the more important thing is I was living with my parents until I made enough money with my games to move out. So that's the first thing. So I was making games for, there you go, Spider-Man's back. Uh, yeah, so I was making... Uh, flash games for about five years and I was still living with my parents because that couldn't pay enough but yeah by the end I was already making about five or six hundred bucks a month and then I went on to Steam and that started actually making some decent money so yeah pretty much the answer is low cost of living plus living with parents plus having a nice ramp up of experience so for about five years that I was making games I wasn't really making enough so that's pretty much it Super chat, thank you. Do you have any predictions on when <clears throat> multiplayer won't come out? I, I'm hoping by the end of this month, but honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I I've done a bunch of research. I've done a little bit of the prototype, but yeah, there's still still a lot of work to do. I still got to research a lot more. I still got to finish the prototype. Then I got to write all the lectures. Then I got to record them. Then I got to edit them. And then finally publish them. So. I'm hoping I can do all of that within this month, so maybe on the last week of this month, or maybe the first or second week of March, so I don't know. But yeah, hopefully hopefully it won't be too long, hopefully. Alright, great. And there we go. Uh, Alright, okay, so let's go on to the next question. So where was I? Okay, so let's go with this one. So this is a fun one. Uh, oh, Tiki Java. Yeah, it's almost 
dinner time, so I'm going to have to close in a little bit. Já vai. Um bocadinho, espera aí. Ok, so let's just go into the next one. Espera aí, bebê, espera aí. Alright, so there you go. Brand new question. So this one is on lecture 15. So let's see, lecture 15. That is the one on the selected count of original and the singleton. Okay. So what is the cause of the flickering bug? And let me actually show that bug that I mean. Uh, oh boy, I need that. Uh, is it two objects? Don't worry about the time. I'm going to... Yeah, because I actually need to... Uh, let me just make a quick... A quick testing scene. Yeah, because I probably should have prepared the testing scenes beforehand. Uh, just need to pick up something. Okay. Oh, Tiki, não te ajudar. Deixa lá. Fica aí. Já, pera aí, pera aí, pera aí. Pera aí, por fim. Já vamos, já vamos, já vamos. Pera aí, pera aí. Já vamos, já vamos. Uh, trying to... Oh, boy. I didn't... Yeah, I didn't plan this this demo ahead of time. So let me like this, like this. Just select a different material. Anything. Oh boy. Oh actually Oh, because I remember that I saw this a little bit. Uh yeah, sorry for the a bit of chaos right now. I'm yeah, because I did. Now I can't find it. Uh, where's my where's my? I'm trying to find something and I can't find it. There you go. That's the one. There you go. Okay, so that's the that's the bug that I want to show. Okay, so let's go in here. So there you go. Look at this. Look at this flickering. So this is what I mean. So. What is the cause of this flickering bug, where the texture is flickering back and forth? So is it that two objects are in the mathematically exact position? Is the GPU broken, or is it a physics collision? So there you go, this is the bug. So if all of you, if some of you didn't know what I meant by that, go ahead and vote. And let me look at chat. Yeah, this one was a bit tricky. And... Oh boy, there's even <laughs> flickering over here, yeah. Someone over there does have the the right answer there you go oh boy let me end this because this flickering is driving me crazy and yep the answer is indeed a it is two objects are on the mathematically exact position or like these people mention more the more technical term is z fighting so it's more in the z buffer so basically since this quad is literally on position where's the position so there you go it is literally on zero just like the floor object these two are on the exact same thing, so this is a very nasty visual issue. So if you have this, one solution is super simple. Literally just put this a tiny bit off. There you go, just like this, just by moving it by 0.01, and now no longer got the problem. So yep, this is called Z fighting, because both are on the exact same depth. So that is what makes it quite annoying. So if you have that, now you know. Just make sure that one of the objects is not on the exact perfect position, and everything will be nice and fixed. All right. Okay, so that was a bit a bit tricky to set up the demo. Yeah, I guess next time I gotta prepare demos ahead of time. Okay. Do you have a Discord channel? I don't, but uh, CPU over here has a nice Discord channel. So if you want to, it's called United Programming. So just found it, find it in Discord. So if you want Discord, go ahead on there. Basically, I tried having a Discord and it didn't work because I'm already insanely busy trying to answer all the comments, course questions, emails, all those things. It is always super difficult to keep up, so I really couldn't keep up with one more thing, especially since Discord is real time, so that is why I couldn't do it. Alright, so thank you so much for the super chat. And got another one. Did not get the YouTube notification arrived late, huh? Well, this one is going to be saved and this one is hopefully a bit educational so hopefully for people who are catching this after a while so hopefully that's nice 
Yeah, stream announcements posted on Discord. Hope you have a great time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there is an email on the website, so if you log in, if you go onto your user page, you can sign up to be notified, and yeah, it will send that. In-depth fighting. Yep, Z fighting. Okay, all right, so let me do a bunch more questions because it's already 6.30, so I gotta stop in a little bit. Okay, so let's see this one. This one is a, a fun one. So let me copy the options. That one and that one and that one. All right, so there you go. Another question. This one is related to lecture 18. So that is a lecture on player pickup and C sharp interface. So the question how many interfaces and base classes can a class implement or extend? So is it A, multiple interfaces but only one base class? Or is it B, uh, multiple base classes but only one interface? Or is it C, as many as you want? So if you got base classes and interfaces, how many can you implement slash extend? So let's see. And thank you so much, Tux, for the super chat. Thank you. Another one queued. Oh boy, there's even more queued. <laughs> thank you so much. Sorry if I, I miss them. Yeah, I'm trying to keep up with everything. Uh, Sabhari, yeah, that's a nice name. Thank you for everything you do for us. Hey, thank you for the super chat and thanks for being here. Yeah, I mean, these live streams really, it's a two way thing, so it only works if I'm here and if all of you are here watching. So, thank you all so much for being here on this random. Is it Tuesday? I don't even know what day it is. It is Tuesday, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, so, so thank you all for being here. I make every correct answer. I, it's not exactly. I think I did try to, yeah, I tried to change it a little bit. So yeah. Uh, your program C sharp for living that to think about it for a second. <laughs> yeah, I mean that uh, uh, that is a perfectly natural thing. Even for me, I've been making games, programming, and using Unity for so long. And yep, there's still many things that I have to use my brain think for a little bit. So yeah, so much for the videos you make. That's awesome. All right, so yeah, it seems there's literally nobody else on the other one. So if I end the quiz, and end the quiz, and yep, there you go, it is indeed correct. So basically, you can implement multiple interfaces, but you can only extend one base class. That is one of the limitations, and one of the reasons why you should use interfaces over base classes. And also inheritance is always a, I talk about that in, I actually don't remember which one. Is it on the kitchen object? I don't know. I talk about it on the on the course about the issues with inheritance and how it can definitely become quite tricky quite quickly. So it is something that you can use because it is a very powerful thing, but definitely you have to be careful when you use them. Whereas with interface, personally, I'm a huge fan of interface. I think they are awesome, especially since with uh, as of C Sharp 7, you can use default implementations. So that means you can write an interface and actually write the code. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, here's a quick test. So instead of making a public class, you can make it an interface. So I, my interface. You can do this, and then inside you can have a function, my function, and do something. And then on a class, you would implement this interface. And again, as it says on the question, you can implement multiple interfaces. But as of C Sharp 7, you can also do something awesome, which is over here you can do a default implementation. So if you have an interface and already have a bunch of objects that implement that interface and you want to add something new, you can add a default implementation and everything will work perfectly. So you don't have to actually add the implementation, but you can if you want to. So interfaces are super awesome. For example, if you got a game and some objects have an inventory and some objects don't, you can use an interface to say, I has, inter uh, I has inventory and implement that interface on any object that has an inventory. So interfaces are super powerful and it is something that I definitely use quite a lot in the course and I've got a dedicated video on them. So if you don't know about interfaces, definitely watch the course and then definitely watch that video. Okay, so yeah, another awesome thing. So I hope some of you are learning something new from this. Even though I'm looking on the side, <laughs> most people got 100% right. So. I'm not sure. Maybe I should have made the questions quite a bit harder. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's do one more and then I think that's going to be it because my voice already messed up. How did you sell your first games? Well, my first games were made with Flash and back with Flash that was uh, basically it was sponsoring. So basically a, a company, a sponsor would 
uh, pay the Flash developer and then it would show up a logo of that company with a link to the website and so on. So usually those were Flash game portals. So I would make a game, I would put it on a website for selling Flash games. Then a company would contact me say, we'll give you 300 bucks if you put the link, the logo with our custom animation and so on. Yeah, pretty much kind of like a publisher. That's that's kind of what they did. Yeah, they had the game portals. So for example, a lot of you probably already know Armor Games. So that was one of the big ones back then. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, okay, right. So thank you so much for the super chat. And there's another one. Oh boy, there's even more. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep up. Uh, Olivia, I'm a system engineer and thinking of going into coding games. I wanted to ask, apart from coding for your games, did you work as a coder somewhere else? And nope, the answer is nope, I didn't. I pretty much just, I've never had a regular job. So if any of you have questions with regards to finding a job in the industry, I am not the right person to <laughs> to answer about that because yeah, I've never had a, a job anywhere else doing anything else. Although I have done a lot of things by myself. So I've done some some regular applications. I've done some websites, a bunch of things. So I have done a lot of things, but not professionally. Yeah, professionally making games, that's pretty much the only thing I've ever done. So thank you so much, Olivier, for the super chat. Thank you so much. Another one, Takvir Singh. And is it, was this a, a, yeah, because my overlay does not support the, what is it called, the stickers? I don't know, but thank you so much. Tegvir Singh. Is that how you pronounce it? That's a nice name. Nice. Chess Lab. That's one. Uh, okay, so let me put another question here. So one more question. Okay, so this one is hopefully a bit trickier. So let's see this one, how it goes. Okay, so this one is actually related to lecture 14. So this is one about C-sharp events. And C-sharp events use something called a function signature. So the question is, what is a function signature? So is it A, the function name? Is it B, the return type and parameter types? Or is it C, the return type, the function name, the parameter types and parameter names? So which one of these is correct? So which one of these relates to the function signature? So let's see, go ahead and start to vote. And let's see. I should probably add a nice clock. <laughs> what is that? Oh boy, now I don't remember. Countdown, is that the thing? The British game show, which has a a nice timer with a nice sound. That was fun. Uh, all right, so there you go. Lots of votes. I didn't even see. It's going to be funny looking at this. Uh, the chat rate for this <laughs> for this stream is quite interesting. Lots of spikes, lots of things. Anyways, uh, yeah. All right. It's countdown. I only know countdown because of the skit on on uh, the IT crowd. <laughs> that was really funny, where Moss becomes really hardcore into countdown, becomes a famous person within that circle. That was fun. <laughs> All right. Okay, so people are voting. Seems the majority thinks that it's C. The return type, the function name, the parameter types, and the parameter names. So let's see. How do you make be better character design? I mean, that's an art question, so <laughs> I am definitely not the right person to teach about art. So, yep. Nice to Netanba. <laughs> uh, that was really funny. Yeah. <laughs> I, do, I still I still memorize the... Uh, what's it called? The, the replacement to... 999. What's that one? 0118 999 88195 Oh god, no, I forgot. 723? Oh god, no, I forgot the last numbers. <laughs> uh, anyway, that was fun. Okay. Uh, how to spin pen like you? You search for pen tricks and so on. And that's uh, lots of people. That's super chat cute. Thank you so much. Hey CPU, it's live quiz seems to be very fun. Thanks for doing them. Yeah, this was a fun idea that I had, and so far it's working great. I mean, this is a Unity window, and so far it hasn't crashed. Everything is working. So yeah, I'm very, I'm very pleased with this. So if all of you are enjoying this, I will hopefully be doing more in the future. <laughs> all right. So yeah, the function signature. So let's go ahead and end the quiz, and let's see which one is the correct answer. And for this one. 
I really need a drum roll, so I should probably have a drum roll. And there you go. And there you go. The answer is B. So now the majority was actually wrong for the first time. Wow, that is interesting. So, yep, the answer is B. For the function signature, what matters is the return type and the parameter types. Meaning that the function name and the parameter names, that does not matter. So you can have a function with different names, different parameter names. As long as the types are correct, that is the one thing that really does matter. All right, so look at that. Yeah, for this one, <laughs> I won. Yeah, that definitely got a bunch of people off 100%. So there you go. Roki at 100% with 16 right answers. <laughs> what do I win? I, I'm not sure. I should probably come up with some prizes, some things. Yeah, from that from your delegates video. Yeah, that's nice. Awesome. Yeah, because that is for delegates. So if uh, some of you don't know what I'm talking about, for example, let's make over here a delegate. My delegate returns an int, an int, and has a string for some kind of parameter. And now I can make a private void, uh, right, int my function with a string, my string. And this one is a function return minus one, just to get rid of that error. And basically over here, this function does match this delegate signature. So basically what matters is the return type. So they both return int and they both have a string parameter. Now the actual name of the delegate does not have to match and the actual name of the parameter also does not have to match. So if I make a private, a field of type my delegate, so my delegate field, if I do this, I can do my delegate equals my function. And yep, there you go. That does work because this one does have the exact same signature as that delegate. So they both return in, they both have a string, and it does not matter that this one is called param and over here is my string, that does not matter for the function signature, all that matters are the types of this. So yeah, look at that, so a bunch of you actually got it wrong, so that was fun. So that means that a bunch of you uh, learned something new, so hopefully that is the positive takeaway, so nice. Trying your streams are, so creative. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, thank you for the super chat, thank you for being here, thank you for watching. That is fun. Another super chat queue. There's even more. Hey, Rogerio. Hey. Whenever you have time, search and watch this video. Speed up compile times in Unity with assembly definitions. Yeah, I do have a lecture about assembly definitions on my Ultimate Unity Overview course. So this one who made that. Is that a... a oh, look at that. There it is. <laughs> Live right now. That's fun. Uh, compile times in Unity with... Simile definitions. Is this an official? Oh, it's the one from Game Dev Guide. Yep, definitely. Assembly definitions, if you have problems with compilation time, definitely use them. Basically, that's one way that you can split your code into multiple assemblies. So if you modify just one line of code on one file, you won't actually recompile the entire game, which if you don't use assembly definitions, then that's what happens. You modify a single file and it won't recompile every single file. Whereas if you use assembly definitions, by modifying one file, it will only recompile that assembly. So if you have a huge code base, it can still be really fast to compile, as long as it's nicely separated into different assemblies on different parts. So whenever you modify something, only that assembly gets recompiled. So if you use tons of, tons of them, then even on a huge project, it can definitely be super fast. All right. So yeah, thanks for sharing for that tip. So those of you who don't know assembly definitions, definitely watch this video. Game Dev Guide usually has great videos. Or if you have my Ultimate Unity Overview course, I also have a lecture on that. So yeah, that is really awesome. Thank you. Not super chat queued. Gemma... Gembari, <laughs> sorry about the name, of your tutorials, yeah, it's great, you make tutorial series on how to host your multiplayer game using Unity's new cloud game server hosting multiplayer, yep, that is definitely one of the things that I do want to cover, I'm hoping to cover that on the upcoming multiplayer course, and I'm also hopefully uh, hoping to make a separate tutorial just on that subject, so yep, that is definitely something that I definitely want to cover, although I haven't done any research yet, so I'm not sure... I'm not sure when, but yep, definitely on the plan, definitely something that I want to do, so thank you so much. Another super chat, Hokey, winner, <laughs> can't choose a beta idea, I mean, <laughs> that would be a fun one, a fun prize, but I already have way too much work, so I'm not sure that would be very doable, I think if I made that the prize, I'm not sure I could guarantee that I would end up making it, so <laughs> yeah, that would be fun, but yeah, I've got, I have to say, like a video idea is definitely something that I don't have. I've got a billion things that I wish I could make, 
If only I could clone myself so that I could work on 10 different ideas at the same time, I'd love to do that. <laughs> so yeah, that would be that would be fun. Thank you so much. Another super chat. Yeah, there you go. Choose a video idea. That would be fun. So yeah, thank you so much. All right. Okay, so that was a, a fun question. All right, so I think that's gonna be it because I'm already, my voice is already pretty messed up. I can't talk way too much. Some people are at 100% less questions. Yeah, the 100% is just questions, uh, answers versus the total. So yeah. So for example, over here, Berke answered 15 and got 15 right, even though there were apparently at least 16 questions. So yeah, that's the, the percentage is not percentage of total questions. It's answered versus correct. Okay. All right. So I think that's going to be it. I need to go eat something, drink something, and my dogs are... Alright, okay, so I think that is gonna be it. Okay, so let me just put this, I'm gonna leave this on for a little bit, and then let's see. Alright, so let me just organize everything, and it is correct. Alright, so yeah. Thank you all so much for being here on this live stream. This was a different thing. It was an experiment and well, so far it went pretty well. So I'm pretty happy with how it went. So hopefully all of you enjoyed it. So hopefully a bit more in the in the future. So my plan for this year is definitely doing a bunch more live streams and experiment with different things kind of like this. So hopefully you enjoyed it. So thank you all so much for being here. So let me just prepare things and I gotta go like this. All right. All right, so yeah, thank you all so much for being here. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.